Hey now, this is an exciting day. It is a double brew day and I am prepping the second batch of beer to be brewed. So I'm doing a 10 gallon batch of an American wheat ale. What I'm looking for is something that's going to be in the low 4% range, really light, easy to drink, a decent percentage, like a third of the grist will be wheat and just a little bit of, uh, a little bit of crystal malt and oats in there for a little silkiness. So let's take a look at the grist. So taking a look at this here, the base is RAR 2-row malt. That's the majority of it. And then we've got 32% Canada malting white wheat malt. There is 4% flaked oats, which are not in here. They're going to be added directly to the mash. And then there is 2% Crystal 40, and that's just really for a little kind of color addition. It's not going to do too much flavor-wise. So let's mill it up. So the old monster mill is going to make pretty quick work of this, which is really nice. <laughs> All right, we are ready to mash in. So we're going to be mashing at 65 degrees Celsius or 149 Fahrenheit. So I've got, uh, I'm also running a thinner mash here. So it's four liters per kilogram just because of the wheat then also the oats that are going to go in here too. So because of that, I'm only running a couple degrees Celsius hotter with the sparge water. I don't want to overshoot too badly. All right, so that's mixed up quite nicely. And then we're going to just sprinkle on these flaked oats to the top and just give a little, oh, we won't even need to give it a stir. Now they're sinking. Nice, I'll get this out of the way. Beautiful, just because they can contribute to a, a nasty mash situation. So let's go ahead and get a lock line on there. And we can begin, this is going to be an hour long mash. And dial down the pump. Nice little recirculation, and I'll just play around with my settings here. Well, that's some pretty cloudy work. Let's see how it changes over the course of the mash. And after our, our mash, we are ready to step Yours up. Doesn't go to super fast. You got to change the setting on it, which I haven't done. <laughs> I like to go slow, but we are going up to 75 Celsius uh, or that 168. Fahrenheit range and we're gonna once it hits that let it sit for about 15 or 20 minutes just to make sure that this whole thing is heated through and then we are ready to sparge all right so after 15 minutes at that temperature I'm just going to quickly go ahead and begin to fly sparge so for that I'm going to Clean off my lock line here a little bit, some of that grain that's on there. Transfer the lid. And pull this out, transfer this lid. Get rid of that thermal well. And throw on this cap here. Plug. The last step is finding a little plate here. So we can start it directly into there. Awesome. Now I'm just going to let this fill up a little bit and then I'll begin uh, running off into the boil kettle. So my boil kettle is at the point here where I'm ready to add some of these first wort hops. So I'm adding in 22 grams of green bullet hops at 13.2% alpha and that's going to give me right around 17.7 uh, IBUs right there and what I'm looking for here is some of that subtle spiciness that can come out of it as well as possibly a little bit of raisins and fruit which should pair really nicely with 
both the oats and the wheat. And flame on. No, no, no flame on. There we go, flame on. All right, so I just hit my pre-boil volume. So now I'm going to run off a little bit of extra work, about eight ounces, and that'll be for adding my super moss findings to. I'll be adding that to the beer a little bit down the road. Whew. We have hit an aggressive boil. I'm gonna let this tame down just a little bit. So it's going to be a 60 minute boil and the next thing I need to do is add that super moss finding agent with 10 minutes remaining. All right, so we hit the end of the boil. We're gonna be adding 28 grams of citra hops. Just add a little bit of tropical goodness to this. So after whirlpooling vigorously for about 30 seconds, I let it sit for 15 minutes and then ran it off through the plate chiller into these carboys and now it is time to take them downstairs and get them connected to some heat wraps. And so reading below the meniscus we come in at 1043 which is fantastic. Very excited and can't wait to see how this beer turns out. All right so it's time to aerate these wheat beers. They're up to temperature. I'm going to be pitching the yeast at 67 Fahrenheit and that's where they're sitting at right now. So now I'm just going to give them approximately one minute of this agitation just to aerate. With the low gravity of these beers, I'm not super worried about oxygenating or anything like that because these uh, dry packs of yeast that I'm going to be using, which I'll be rehydrating, will certainly do the job, no problem. And there we go. So I'm just going to let this foam die down a little bit before I pitch the yeast. All right, so it is time to inoculate. And I'm going to start off here. I'm actually going to go with the yeast experiment here. I've got two different strains of dry yeast that I'm going to be using. So this first one is a rehydrated Fermentus SO4 yeast strain. Put that into here. And the second one is also fermentous, it's just a rehydrated USO5. And I really debated rinsing this out in between. Guess what? Maybe we'll go with a, it's a mixed culture. We can now call this a mixed culture beer. So, yeah. And these were just rehydrated in some sterilized filtered water that I pressure cooked along with my plate chiller when I was sterilizing that last night. There we are. And I'm just going to go ahead and get the carboy hoods and everything all set up here. So it's ready for fermentation. We've got carboy hood number one and number two. And these were sitting in a bucket of star sand sanitizer. Now I'm going to go ahead and just grab a couple of these thermal wells and some blow off tubes, some hoses and get them sanitized as well. And then I can show what that looks like. So here we are, we've got the carboy hoods, temperature probes in those thermal wells, blow off hoses, and of course a blow off bucket. And these hoses are just taped onto here to prevent any sort of jostling from removing them from that. So now we're just waiting for fermentation to kick off. Okay, 18 hours in, there's some serious krausen on the wheat beer here with the SO4. And then it's funny seeing the slight lag that we've got here with the USO5, but definitely this will be fermenting here shortly. So this hit high crowds in a few hours after that last shot. Um, you can still see though it's significantly lower crowds in the, SO, in the USO5 than we have in the SO4. So that's interesting. So as soon as these wheat beers peaked and uh, started to fall a little bit there with the Krausen. I started to jack the temperature. I did that one degree Fahrenheit per day until they had 72 Fahrenheit. And I'm rousing them a couple of times a day just to kick yeast back up, all in the effort of hitting maximum attenuation. Keeping that yeast up in suspension, doing what it needs to do, giving it around 20 to 25 or so revolutions. This USO5 carboy, it seems like it's still just a little bit behind as it's 
or at the very least it's producing way more gas than the SO4 is when I rouse it. So probably another few days like this and then I will test the gravity and then probably let them cool down and transfer into kegs. So after a couple of more days at that 72 Fahrenheit, I checked the gravity and the US05 version of the wheat beer matched the force attenuation test 1.010 and the SO4 actually surpassed the force attenuation test, which is interesting, and it dropped to 1009. So that was just a little bit lighter uh, in body. I guess we'll, we'll see what the, the taste uh, comes out at when I actually go to sample the finished product. Speaking of, I'm just getting ready here to gelatin fine this beer because I've got it, uh, I, I chilled the temperature back down, let some of the, the yeast and everything crash out. I've got them in kegs, I pressure transferred them and they're chilled down, ready to gelatin fine, I'll let them sit for about a week and then we will transfer and carbonate. You can check out all those processes in the brewing playlist of the channel if you want. Now I probably didn't need to gelatin fine this as it is a wheat beer. People are expecting probably a little bit hazier of a beverage. However, I did want to drop out as much of that uh, yeast as possible just because I, it's not a Hefeweizen or anything like that. I'm not looking for a lot of yeast character. I wanted to drop out a bunch of that bite. And especially since I didn't have a lot of crazy character malts going in there to kind of buffer some of that. And there's that kind of, uh, should be some of that weedy tang to it. I wanted to kind of make it as mellow as possible in that department. So I've got it on tap in the keyser with the picnic tap, which isn't the prettiest. So I'm just going to go pour it and we will take a look at it here. Well, that is actually a fairly clear wheat beer. You can kind of see me through it. Um, yeah, awesome. I really like that color. It got just a little bit with that 2% crystal malt that was in there. Everything else was super light. The, the, uh, the base malt, and then we had the, it was 32% white wheat malt, 4% oats. So not a lot of color contribution from that other than just from that, uh, that crystal malt. So little sample. Oh, nice little weedy tang to that for sure. And a certain silkiness that's coming out of that wheat and those oats, which was sort of the hope there with that. I think just a little bit of that subtle spiciness that can come out of those green bullet hops. We did first wort hop with that. And maybe this is reasonably cool right now. Um, so I'm not picking up a ton of it. In the aroma, just the barest hint of it. But really, that's sort of what we were after. It's not supposed to be very... Um, I wasn't going for a very hop forward beer, mainly just letting the uh, the wheat and some of those oats kind of shine and making something super drinkable, low bitterness, I think we nailed it, and it looks pretty. So yeah, it's a win. So till next time, keep it at 11.